I want to talk to you guys about suicide and a couple of things, but that's pretty much the gist of today. I just found out that uh, someone I've known for a couple of years took their life and they were a fun, outgoing, awesome, amazing young person. We always had a good chuckle when we were able to spend time together and I feel like it's a punch in the gut and it's something that's happening way too often. What also, you know, I, I, I was speaking at, um, at Houghton House today to the addicts and they said to me, you know, and I hear this often, Nick, you really should write a book. And I'm like, yep, we're in the process of it. My my good friend and the owner of the pub I used to drink at, or the former owner of the pub I used to drink at, Nick has committed to writing the book. And uh, we're calling it, there's two, From the Bar to the Bar, yep, and Rock Bottom Redemption which was the name of the article that Kieran Legg wrote about me for men's health. And then one of the guys in treatment said, you know, Nick, and you should just, or just do an audio book. And I thought, yeah, that's a good idea. I, I'm, I struggle with writing, guys. It's not something that I'm good at. It's not something that I'm comfortable doing. And it's actually something that makes me feel stupid when I do it. So, but I have this. I have my podcast, I have you guys to listen, you know, and I have this means of talking to you and sharing my thoughts and my experience and what I've been through. And I also have, and, and this is why I feel like I've been punched in the gut so much. I have a responsibility to you guys. I have a responsibility to share my experiences and what I've learned over the years. I have a responsibility to share what I've learned in addiction and I have a responsibility to share how I survived suicide. I have a responsibility to share with you how I'm still here, why I'm still here, what I chose, the path I chose, why I didn't pull the trigger. And we get caught up in life. We get caught up in having to earn a living, having to run a business, having to survive. And sometimes we don't have the opportunities, the time, the energy to talk and to share. Because it's a, it's a lot of energy to talk about this stuff. But I have a responsibility because I'm a survivor. I didn't pull the trigger. And there's so many of us out there that are sitting on the edge, on the brink. So I've been working hard the last couple of weeks, months, years actually, but accelerated to gear the business in such a way that I can take hours away from it and focus on this as the next evolution of what I do and what we do. I have an amazing, amazing coach, Cap, who the clients love and is doing very well running that aspect of the business, which means I can focus on this and grow this. I can do this for you guys and for me because everything that I share with you feeds me and helps me build value in my life. So for those who don't know my story, and four and a half minutes into this podcast, I've been sober for 15 years. As a matter of fact, last week, Friday or the week before, I think the, the end of October, <coughs> 15 years. And at a point of my drinking, at that point in my life, the drinking had stopped working for many years 
and there were times, multiple times, I sat on my couch with my gun in my mouth and I asked God to give me the courage to kill myself because I couldn't go on. I shared and spoke to the guys in primary and in secondary today. And I said, it, it tires me out. It, it takes a lot of effort and energy each time to go into that pain and to share that pain. <clears throat> so I take a moment just to compose myself every now and then. Please bear with me because it's difficult. But I have a responsibility. Sitting on my couch with my gun in my mouth, asking God to give me the courage to kill myself. Because nothing else was working. The drinking wasn't working. The lying to myself wasn't working. I couldn't go on. I didn't know how to go on. I didn't want to go on. But I also did not want to die. But I didn't know a, a way out of that. And what my mind was telling me, what my heart was telling me, what my experience, everything was telling me, was a lie. I was lying to myself about the fact that I could not go on. I was lying to myself about the fact that I didn't have what it took. And I was lying to myself that it was rock bottom. Because it was so far from rock bottom. It was so far from the most pain that I would ever feel and experience. But in that moment, in those moments, it was the truth. It was all I could think of. It was all I could know. When I talk to you guys about this stuff, and I talk about putting my gun in my mouth, I can taste the gun. I can taste the metal. I can taste the oil. And I can feel that terror and that fear and that anxiety. I have a terrible fear of heights. So for me it feels like standing on the edge of a cliff. Like standing on the edge of Table Mountain. You don't want to jump, you're terrified because you're going into something that's completely unknown. But anything is better than where you are. Anything is better than where you are. In that moment. That's what you believe. That's what I believed. But it was not true. Anything is better than where I am right now. I cannot go on. I need to pull the trigger. I need this to stop. But I don't want to die. But I don't know another way. That's what is going on in my head. That's what I believe. But I'm here. So I was wrong. There is another way. Whether I know it, whether I can see it, whether I can believe it, whether I can comprehend it in my wildest imagination, there is another way. My inability to see it does not mean that it's not real, does not mean that it does not exist, does not mean that it is not the truth. It's exactly the same with our inability to see how incredible we are, our inability to see how strong we are, and our inability to believe that we are valuable and that we are valued. 
Just because we don't believe something doesn't make it not true. And just because we believe something doesn't mean that it is true. I believed that I had no value. I believed that I had no worth. I believed that I had no ability. I believed that I was a thing to be used by others. Because that's what I learned as a child. When my mother would send me to her dealers and they would drug me and rape me, I was a party thing. I was a thing to be used for the pleasure of others. That's what I believed about myself. And because I believed it and because it was my reality, I thought it was the truth. But it's not the truth. What I believed was wrong. And that's what I want to share with you guys. That's what makes me so angry about this thing. Makes me so angry about good people believing things that are not true about themselves and taking their lives. Or about good people believing things about themselves that are that is not true because they learnt it as a child. They learnt that they had no value. They learnt that they had to do things for love. They learnt that they had to do things to please others, to be liked. They learnt that their value, their worth was their weight and how they looked. They learned that they were accessories. They learned that they had to achieve in order to receive praise and a <sighs> We learn lies about ourselves. We learn lies based on other people's fear, based on other people's anxiety, based on other people's desire or need. We learn lies about ourselves based on other people being broken. And we build that up our whole lives. I'm very glad I didn't kill myself because I learnt that my value is not as a thing. And the thing that I'm most valuable to, the person I'm most valuable to is myself. Because I'm here and I can do stuff every day. Every day above ground for me is a good day. And I'm grateful that I didn't pull the trigger. But I understand. I understand what it's like to be on that precipice. And how close I came to stepping off it pulling the trigger into blowing the back of my head out. How close I came to dying and not being here and not experiencing what I'm experiencing now. These gifts. And it kills me and it breaks my heart that good people are fighting that pre precipice. That are clawing their way back from it. Because of things they believe that are not true. If you're in that position and you're contemplating ending your life, you're contemplating killing yourself, I can tell you right now, categorically, what you believe about yourself, what you believe about your situation, what you believe about the hopelessness of where you are, is not true. It is not the truth. It is not hopeless, even though it seems hopeless. You are not worthless, even though you feel you are worthless. You are not weak and incapable of coping, even though it seems that you are weak and you are incapable. 
what you are believing is not true. And all you have to do is make it through today. You have to make it through today and you have to reach out and you have to ask for help. You have to surround yourself. You have to find people to surround yourself with that show you light, that help you understand your value and your worth and your strength. All you have to do is make it through today. We can plan for tomorrow, but we can do nothing about it other than plan. And we can learn from our past, but we can do nothing about it other than learn. All we have is today, this moment. We make it through this moment and we understand that we've got the strength to make it through the next moment. The fact that we are here right now, today, is proof that we have the strength. We have the strength to make it through today. That's what I mean when I tell you, listen and learn from yesterday. And the fact that you made it through yesterday is proof that you can make it through today. Because you are wiser today. You have learned skills that today that you did not have yesterday. Even if it's the tiniest thing. So you have the strength to make it through today. Because you made it through yesterday. You made it through the last hour so you can make it through the next minute. Because sometimes that's what it comes down to. And understand that the things that you believe about yourself may not be true. The things that you believe about your reality may not be true. There is always a way through. And sometimes that's minute by minute. There is always a brighter side. There is always a better day. There is also always a worse day. But we understand we have the strength because we made it through this far. We can make it through further. We just don't pull the trigger. We don't step off the edge. Because what's ever telling us that we need to do that that that's the only way, that's not true. It is not the truth. And the things that we believe about ourselves that lead us to that precipice, to that edge, to tasting that gun, those things we believe us about ourselves, that we are worthless, that the world is better off without us, that there is no point to our existence, that we are so bad that the world would be better off without us. Those things are not true. Because no matter where we are in our lives, we can turn our lives around in an instant, in a decision. And we fight with everything that we have. And we fight with the experience that we have. And we fight, we take our pain and we burn it. We burn it as fuel. We fuel our fight. We understand that we have experience and knowledge gained in pain that will enable us to get through. When we do not believe that we are worth anything, we need to find those who believe that we are. And even though I've never flipping met you, I know better than you because I've been doing this for 15 years and I've had conversations, deep, profound, honest conversations with tens of thousands of people about the subject, about their pain, 
about their lack of self-belief. I've never met a bad person in recovery. I've never met a bad person in treatment. I've met good people who have done very bad things. But I've never met a bad person. And we can make a decision to turn it around, to start being of service, to start doing for others without the expectation of anything back. And that becomes the most powerful, incredible, wonderful, mind-blowing way of building value in our lives and starting to feel about ourselves in wonderful ways that we could not imagine, dream, we couldn't comprehend. Just as we couldn't see a way out, it's the same thing that's blocking us from seeing our true value and worth. And until you can believe in yourself, believe your value and believe your awesomeness, understand that I believe that about you, even though I've never met you. And if I have, then even deeper. Surround yourself with people that see your value. And if you can't do that, understand that I see your value. I see your worth. I know that this world is a better place because you're in it. Look how angry I'm getting. I need you to understand this. I need you to, if you don't believe anything, just believe me when I tell you this. The world is a better place with you in it. And if you haven't yet found your purpose, one day at a time, one moment at a time, one little act of kindness to another and to yourself. going to start to build a life of value. It's 3.30 p.m. Let's go grab a glass of water. And why don't you go wash your hands? Google. You know, kindness is an incredible thing. Being kind to another. It's a double-edged sword. I can't think of another metaphor. It's a double-edged sword. You're kind to someone else, it's kind to you. When you show someone kindness, you are showing kindness to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Do something for yourself. And do something for another without the expectation of anything back. Be kind to someone who needs it. That can just be a smile, a hello, a thank you. Understand your value and your worth. And if you can't, believe me when I tell you that you have value and that you have worth. And you keep doing that until you believe it for yourself. There is always a way out. It's called making it through the day. All we have to do from the time we wake up in the morning is be here until we put our head on the pillow at night. We go to sleep and we wake up the next day more skilled, more experienced and better equipped to deal with the next day. Stay as far away from that edge as possible. Keep that gun well away from your mouth. There is always a way out. And just because we can't see it does not mean it's not there. So I'm committing to you guys. To do more of these. If I'm not able to write my book. Right now I can share with you through this medium. I can share with you what I've learned in 15 years of being sober. And I can share with you what I learned in 36 years of living as a drunk, but not killing myself. And I'm sharing this with you, and I'm pulling out these, this energy, and I'm going to go sit on the couch now and be wiped out, and have to muster 
and pull myself together because I've got clients at five o'clock. But I'm doing that because you are worth it. I'm doing this for you. You are worth it. You are worth my effort and my energy. Because this world is a better place with you in it. Even if you can't see that for now. I love you guys. Thank you.